Okay, good evening anybody who's on stream. Welcome. Let's uh, do some more pyrography tonight. After the stream last night I did a little bit more work on this and it started to look a bit better so I'm going to persevere with it a bit more and just see whether I get more happy with it. If I don't I can still uh, file it in the round portfolio but we'll uh, we'll carry on with it for the moment. I kind of don't really want to admit defeat but uh, I'm quite willing to do so. It's maybe something about the colour that's making it look decidedly odd. I'm still not happy with the nose but I'm just going to do uh, um, some coloration to make some of the fur darker and we'll see if that makes it look better. So this evening is a lot more of making fur look darker. Which is just lots and lots of lines I'm afraid. So good evening everybody. I trust everybody has had a good day so far, whatever time it may be, wherever you are. I'm in the UK so it's just currently uh, 10 minutes to 8 at night and I haven't had too bad a day today. So. I don't need to create any more texture as such, I'm just darkening this fur down. And then we'll just see whether that changes the appearance. So it's more or less just a case of going over over the fur, uh, following more or less the same direction of, th of the angles of the fur that I've already got here and just taking my time so that the tool has time to heat up the the sap and uh, make it go darker. So no particular rapid movements I'm afraid, just a steady progression. Turning the piece round as I work because it's just easier to do that than trying to move my arm around to match the fur directions. If you are new to my stream, then good evening. What you are looking at is pyrography. If you are not new to my stream, you've heard this um, probably quite a lot already, but pyrography it literally translates as fire writing. Pyro meaning fire, graphy meaning writing. But the, um, what is now an old joke of I'm neither uh, using fire nor am I writing. It more literally, I say more practically translates to creating image with heat. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm using an electrically heated tool. Specifically it's called a flat shader. Flat referring to the fact it's flat and shader referring to how it tends to get used. And uh, I'm using it on birch plywood. Uh, birch being used because it's fairly light, the colour contrasts, so the colour uh, shades it can get are uh, quite good, and there's little difference between the uh, grain, uh, the hard and soft areas of the grain in terms of how they take colour and the way in which the wood reacts. So it's all around quite a good colour to, so it cut quite a good wood to use. for this purpose. And although it frequently and often gets called burning wood, we don't actually burn any wood generally speaking, or certainly I won't be burning wood. Um, it's more a case of drawing the liquid out of the wood fibres and cooking that liquid very much like you might uh, cook maple syrup when you do that it goes darker, it goes a, a golden or a dark brown colour depending on how much you cook it. And that's exactly what I'm doing here with the heated tool. I'm heating up that liquid and I'm effectively cooking it. 
and then it sits on the surface very much like a varnish and indeed you know, there are times when you can actually see it glossy and yeah, it's a, a shiny varnish like finish now whether or not that liquid is properly described as sap I'm not quite sure but that's the closest uh, description that I've got available for it now there are other forms of pyrography yeah. some other forms use different materials so you can do this on leather or, or any form of leather actually um, you can do it on paper being a wood fibre or anything wood fibreish like never actually tried material but um, I, mean, I suppose that you know, cotton I suspect would probably work I don't know about anything else you can also use bone and ivory of course ivory is a prescribed substance so you um, it's, it's not available to do now but it is something that a long time ago um, the sailors, you know, the old wood ship sailors would do a, a form of pyrography on ivory um, I believe it got called scrimshaw so it's black, black on white generally and they do that with a sailmaker's needle because that's what they had on board and a little spirit burner to basically um, you know, contain the flame because you didn't want a lot of flame on a an old sailing ship and they do some really intricate artwork on the ivory it is possible to do similar things uh, with with bone I do understand it's got quite a smell if you do that so it's perhaps not the sort of thing you generally want to use there's no smell doing this at all with wood I am mean, not heating the wood up enough to to cause any smoke or anything like that and at most you get a, a warm wood smell like you would do on a sunny day perhaps but if I really try really hard and get it really dark carbon almost carbonized wood turn the heat up then you can get a, a burning wood smell but I'm not I, it's not quite hot enough to actually uh, set a fire or at least this still doesn't get that hot most of the time never actually turn this one up to 11 or even 10 just to see what happens uh, there are some tools where you can literally get the end to glow orange and I suppose in that particular case it may be possible to actually burn something but uh, I don't generally work with that amount of heat it's not something I found particularly useful to, to my to the way in which I work uh, in this art form As of, well, um, it is kind of important that the the these marks I'm making are making a fur-like texture that you you can see in very light here and darker here. You can even see it on this other this other image to the left. And it is important that I do this in the direction that the fur runs. Otherwise, it looks odd. And I for quite some time. Uh, certainly all of yesterday's stream I am aware that this looks really odd which has probably got something to do with the angles of the fur and that's one reason why I'm doing a lot more work on it and I'm not actually altogether sure that the right is making the face look misshapen at times the darkening it down is does appear to be helping and I'm not quite sure why that should be because I am tending still to follow the same um, for lines but it could just be the uh, the difference um, with the old white is just looks like a different cat to the reference image and therefore it just looks looks wrong and I am trying to rationalize what is really just it's not colored correctly yet not quite sure we shall see as it develops uh, as I say I was almost well I was on the point last night of filing this 
I did a little bit more work after the stream and it started to look a bit better so I thought I'll just uh, you know, uh, uh, well at, at, at worst waste some more time um, at best come out with a picture or an image that actually looks okay and since this is kind of a hobby and if the at worst bit means it gets filed well so be it uh, I will have wasted a little bit of wood but I'd have gained experience and you guys perhaps get to laugh at a silly image but anyway so positives even though it would be a negative to abandon a piece now I need to just clean the tip of this tool so I can do this on paper and this just shows you how hot that tool is if you like it's hot enough to you know to to injure me but it's not setting the paper on fire I'm not even really ironing the paper very much if I kept it in one place for a while it probably would and it did certainly get brown but so would the wood underneath and I don't want that to happen by accident so no attempts to set the paper on fire tonight generally speaking all that happens is the paper will carbonize and just drop apart as I say the tool really isn't turned up enough to even get close to setting paper on fire nearly so what I'm kind of I've got a reference image in front of me you can see a small part of it down at the bottom left there but I'm kind of ignoring it a little bit at this stage I am also trying to visualize the anatomy of the cat's skull basically where the bones are which I'm not really that good at but that kind of tells me where the curves should be so you know well, there's a there's the eye socket if you like which comes down this and then the cheekbone which comes down the side here the eye socket is somewhere around here and then the head very quickly curves back over the top and I think perhaps that's where some of this fur doesn't quite quite look right but we'll see as we go so I'm just trying to visualize that and then make sure that the fur texture is following that that um, the, the line of the skull basically and then I'm aware that it looks a little odd around here as well even though that's really how it looks on the reference image um, it, I've perhaps been a little bit more pronounced with the, the little bump here than I should have been and I think what I may do um, is I'll just smooth that off a little bit I'll cheat <laughs> and just smooth that off a little bit so it doesn't look quite as angular um, if I don't start the ear quite in the same position it won't actually be significant if it starts you know a couple of millimeters further out uh, it won't really uh, matter in terms of the picture so I shall fix that that's something which could also be making things look a little odd lots of things lots of little things stacking up and when they do you just go mm, no it's wrong uh, rather than trying to sort out each each one in turn that may be something that I'm doing I have come across doing that before and it's kind of too many mistakes whereas if you actually start and just knock them off one at a time it's quite easy to fix A bit like the old joke, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Not that you'd ever eat an elephant, but you know what I mean. Bubbles to Monkey. Hiya, how are you this evening? Good evening. I saw you doing your uh, sword last night. I think I saw you do two panels. Which was uh, interesting. I was watching about three other streams at the same time as well, but... Uh, I trust you are doing okay today. I'm trying to fix this piece as you probably just caught if you're around a little while. 
um, spending a bit more time on it last night I, at the end of the stream I was um, I think if you you might have been around not sure was uh, going to throw in the towel on it and abandon it but I did some more work after the stream while I was watching you and Free and a couple of other people and it started to look a bit better so I decided I'd give it another chance So that's what I'm doing here. It's 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 the dark colour has changed the perception a little bit. It's uh, reshaping the face. Kind of normally familiar with that in airbrushing. You've got a phenomenon where dark colours recede backwards in your perception, and light colours come forward. And that's possibly what's going on here a little bit. Uh, and I may what I may need to do is is color some of the white in here, give it a little bit of a color like I did with Junior uh, on this piece, just to turn it down a little bit so that it it actually doesn't stick out as much in your face. Oh, you finished the ironing. Ah, that sounds good. Are you going to show it on stream tonight? Uh, the completed piece. Um, may or may not get the chance to have a look but it would uh, be interesting see how that did because that was quite a big piece wasn't it at least I think it was about was it six or eight panels it seemed to be quite large anyway when I saw it when you were trying to sort of put it together and take it apart to move it So we're now in for what will be a really exciting stream of me just darkening areas of this fur down. Come to think of it, I kind of did something similar when I did Junior, although I was I was reasonably happy with it. I just couldn't get the shading right, and I ended up darkening all the fur down before I I continued with it. And it may well be that that's what I'm just the same thing might happen here really once I. Once so I get the dark shade in it may well look out certainly look a lot better to me and then maybe I'll just be able to get on with it. Twelve panels. Oh, okay. That's one heck of a lot. I know they weren't all full, but it's still a heck of a lot of beads, is that? Mine still hasn't arrived yet. Um I suspect they may have dispatched it yesterday, so could be in the next day or so. I'm not sure I'm going to do any for a little while though. Um, because the area that you're looking at here is about the size that I've got and I know you can do a panel at a time but then I need a, a space big enough to put them together to actually iron them. Um, and You can see the space I've got available. Uh, Okay, so that's kind of the eye, the eye socket level is just around about where I've done to here, and then the skull is sort of going to start and curve over the top at that point. The face, the eyes, is sort of on the front, of course, which gives them the good vision. So very, very soon, these the hair here is almost going to be then curve in a yeah I'm kind of working out just the the angle of curve if I can see if see if it matches what I'm thinking as I said earlier you know trying to keep the texture moving in the right direction because that texture is kind of visible to you it leads your eye around the curves Now, a bit with the ears doesn't actually seem too bad. I've got another couple of reference images to one side of me here where 
it's just as difficult to see where the fur's going. I am really, you know, intellectually I know where the fur is going, but one of the key things is always to draw what you know, not what you, sorry, draw what you see, not what you know. Because what you know fools you sometimes. And so I'm trying to just look, uh, and basically remind myself, because I don't happen to have a real life model here, uh, just where the the ang fur of the ang you know the angles of the fur are, and uh, what they would look like at this particular point on the head. I mean, if I look at uh, Junior here, for example, the fur texture, which looks okay and looks right, is virtually vertical going into that ear. Felix would not be particularly different, um, and the fact that the ear is turned makes not a lot of difference actually uh, to to where the, to the direction of the fur so that's kind of suggesting to me I have need to make it more straight up into the ear than I've got it here I've got it at 45 degrees or 30 degrees from vertical it's suggesting that I need to go straighter the reference, the actual single reference image for this particular picture, it's just too dark to see where the fur is. I'm not going to be able to get it dark enough to hide that. So, to hide it, because <coughs> it, to get dark enough to hide sort of any texture at all, it's down like uh, his nose here, and I'm not comfortable doing that uh, up here. It just wouldn't look right. So we will try. One nice thing really about this is if I go over the top again, although it'll get darker, I can actually retexture it if necessary. The wood is actually sort of moving. Uh, it's a little bit plastic is the wood. It, it sort of moves. Uh, it can sort of push the push the lines about, so to speak, that I'm creating. So if necessary, as I say, I can go over it again and just push the lines in a different direction, making it more, you know, uh, to change to change the fur direction. Not bothered about a ragged edge here. I kind of want a ragged edge. Um, the fur doesn't stop dead. You know, it's not like somebody's taken a nice pair of scissors and created a nice, but you know, trimmed edge. It's sort of just where the the hairs grew onto. It doesn't go all the way into the ears. It does literally stop sort of round about there, but um, you know, the you don't get hairs t uh, talking to each other and saying, "Let's stop at this line." <laughs> So if I'm, I'm rough on it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, in fact, it's, it's preferable. It looks more realistic that way than if I did stop it at a dead straight line. Ow. What kind of video games do I enjoy playing? Um, I assume you mean computer games as opposed to arcade type video games. <laughs> games where I adventure and some and and more realistic simulators it's probably the um, the best description uh, but that that relatively speaking covers quite a large series of genres um uh, i mean you know the, there is the archetypal adventures the old text adventures like zork for example from infocom they're some of my favorite text only adventures partly because they've got the best pictures that you can possibly imagine and um, there are sort of the true adventure games so things like the Cyan games, uh, Mist, that sort of thing um, but then there's the adventure games where adventure is, is kind of a secondary uh, secondary activity so let's say doom for example you know the idea is to go around shooting things 
but you explore, find secret passages and that sort of thing as you do it. Um, and, uh, you know, the Resident Evil series as well, that's kind of like another one. It's, it's advent adventuring, solving puzzles, uh, and whilst you're at it, shooting anything that moves. Um, so there's 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 quite a you know quite a few things like that. Um, I'm not games like let's say Call of Duty where the objective is just if it moves shoot it. Um, I can watch, but I'm not really interested in playing. I sort of enjoy more the you know go find out where the secret thing is and uh, or, or how to solve a particular puzzle. And then I I sort of mentioned realistic simulators. That's I don't know, there's things like, um, well, Euro Truck Simulator, the, um, uh, either the two large train simulators, Flight Simulator, um, what's the other one that I've, there's three of them, uh, well, I was about to say, yeah, it's just, it, World of Subways, that's a, a train simulator as well, but it's an underground train simulator and farm simulator. Now farm simulator itself isn't realistic at all, sort of, but somehow it kind of is. Um, I, I wouldn't actually say, can't actually really see, say why something like farm simulator. The others are semi-realistic or at least close enough within the game context and, and you know, the fun context to uh, for them to be considered as real and the one thing I like doing with them is actually using real physical controls so for Euro Truck Simulator I've got the wheel and key and wheel and pedals and a gear lever um, f which I also use on the farming simulator for the trains I've actually got a train controller panel which sort of works for most of the games um, and I just get fascinated if you like by the fact that you know I push a lever and the throttle on the train goes up and it starts moving. Push another lever and the brakes go on. I'm not clicking buttons on the computer screen with a mouse. And it's um, that kind of really interests me. I love doing that sort of thing. It's what I tend to call as physical physical computing. Rather a long answer there, Bubbles, but what sort of games do you like playing then? I mean, I suspect you must do if you're asking that... Uh, that is a question. I'm guessing you possibly would play Zelda, which I've played and enjoy playing as well. That's an adventuring sort of game, given that you are um, doing things like the sword and stuff from there. Um, although I suppose you could just be finding random images on the internet and go, oh, that looks nice. Um, which perhaps is kind of what I'd do as well. That looks nice. I feel like doing that one. Um, that train that you might have seen me done that was just a hey that looks like a nice image I just like the image and whilst I, I do play a train simulator I uh, I don't have that I don't, I'm not surrounded by images of the things and in actual fact I don't even have that train in train simulator so but it was just uh, something I saw on the internet and reproduced it took it as a reference image and uh, uh, along with some others, similar ones, and just recreated uh, the loco on rails just for my own thing. Uh, point and click, yeah. RPG, um, RP, uh, RPGs. Do I like RPGs? RPGs is such a wide genre, though, isn't it? I mean, it it covers all sorts of things, and. I mean things. Uh, I mean the best games to some extent could kind of be called a you know at the base level an RPG. You're playing the role of somebody, um, but I'm guessing you mean more the character development type games. Um, and I'm thinking, I guess, I don't know things like World of Warcraft and stuff like that, which come to mind. But uh, yeah, I love the point and click stuff. I can spend hours. Uh, I was doing that. I cite Cyan just as the one that lots of people know, but there's there's hundreds of them around, and they're not 
They don't seem, well I was about to say they don't seem as common these days but I, uh, I've actually sort of seemed to be seeing more of them around really. They're not quite as point and click as they used to be. You know, pixel hunting on the screen which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, they tend to be sort of more free roaming point and click these days but yep oh, okay let's hope they don't watch twitch then otherwise they know what they're getting for the birthday <laughs> I think I think that's going to be a something I'm gonna have to have to do when I start doing if I start doing things like well, I mean, whatever the art is, really, to some extent, but stuff like pearl, uh, you know, the pearls, or so the um, beads, it's going to be okay. I've made it, and now at that point, it's I've made it. I'm not interested anymore. Uh, what do I do with it? Um, I'm going to have to find thing people to give them away to. Oh, okay. Well, I suppose everybody's got a birthday gift, a birthday coming up at some point, haven't they? So. Um, that does offer offer you a little bit of anonymity uh, as to who it belongs to uh, or will belong to. Now it would it would be funny if um, if they had actually watched you doing it and then as soon as you gave them it they realised it. <laughs> now you don't say whether they are actually watching or not because that would partially give it away. Um, a bit of a strong transition there between uh, angles. I've changed the angle too much in one go so I now need to just fiddle it a little bit. Push around a few of these textures just to create a, a, a curve to at least transition between one's going that way and one's going that way. I hadn't noticed that a, a moment ago, but now it stands out a little bit. I can see the line, so I will just have to do a bit of work. There are times when uh, I don't know. I feel feel like this. I, I know it's down to the wood to some extent, but it's almost like somebody's turned this off. I'm getting getting no colour out of uh, out of it. Well colour doesn't come out of it but you know I'm not getting any colouring effect and um, yet other times you can't stop the thing going really dark on exactly the same setting I know it's down to the wood primarily but it just feels odd you sort of going across something like this it's like drawing with a pencil and the you know you've got a, a really soft pencil you're drawing on paper and nothing's happening you're not getting any marks and it's kind of but it's a pencil and it's kind of at the moment just just around here it's a bit like that I'm having to move move really slowly just to get the color build up There we go. Just moving the, as I say, just moving the textures around a little bit, just around here, just to disguise the, tr the transition between hair going this way and hair going that way. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I, um, I, I don't know those two particular. Either the game or or the the um, author there, but I I have tended to find that if you if you find one one game uh, you know if somebody makes one game that you like you generally like all the others so can get quite expensive though I mean some of them are only a, well I was about to say a pound you know dollar or so I guess on Steam. 
but they can add up really quickly. And the, and the problem I find with some of the some of the points and clicks is, you know, I'll start Saturday morning and I've finished it by Saturday evening, and it's kind of like, what do I do now? <laughs> it's all, and I might only have pay, you know, paid one or two pounds dollars for it, but it still kind of feels like, well, that was short. <laughs> I just get so uh, engrossed in doing them, I just keep going until it's done. But I guess that's good in a way, I mean it shows that the story and the puzzles were engaging. I mean I really hate the ones where they've taken, they've just taken the story and just thrown you know, totally obscure puzzles in which just seem to be there just to have a puzzle and you know you might be you're trying to light a fire so you've got to draw a picture of a, a lock so that you can unlock the play you know you can use the picture and unlock the picture or an unlocked chest for example to get the lighter out of the chest at the side of the fire you go what has this got to do with the game um, I must keep. I must remember to look at humble bumble, humble bumble, humble bubble. Yeah, toil and trouble. Um, I tend not to look at it to be honest. <laughs> Mainly because, well, I've got to say, I don't know if it, they do it with the um, point and click adventures, but there's usually one game that's good and lots that aren't. From my perspective, and it's kind of like, hmm. I kind of like go. Uh, well, I might as well get you know. Uh, and get the, the 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 one game I want might be a little bit cheaper on its own on Steam, for example. And yes, you get all these others, but I'm not going to play them anyway. So, you know, I don't want to really be bothered having them. So I, I tend I haven't really looked a lot at humble bundle stuff. And kind of, I'm not just by saying, you know, I, uh, you know, quite easily play all day, and I love point and click adventures. I don't actually play games a great deal these days. Kind of haven't for a year or so. Um, sort of. I guess to some extent since I um, I started doing art, which is about a couple of three years ago, if I am in the mood to do something other than just stare at this screen that's in front of me watching other people do stuff, um, rather than play a game I'll tend to uh, get on and and do some artwork of some kind. And now that I'm streaming, I you know I have kind of kind of less time uh, all round. I was about to say it's going to prove interesting later this year because there's a couple of things I want to do and probably create some YouTube videos at the same time. And uh, yeah, one of the things I kind of want to do is for because I love modeling is to create a model railway and I actually like little tiny ones so there's a um, a model railway gauge called T gauge T meaning three millimeters so the track is about as wide as this tool is and a, and a whole you know um, a UK intercity train you know would fit on that knife without any problem and they're sort of 10 carriages long um, and yeah just this space in front of you would have a quite an extensive layout on it and I kind of want to do that because I love miniature modeling um, not fantastically bothered about the trains but it's it's that's part of the miniature modeling but kind of want to do that and I'm kind of thinking how on earth am I going to get do that if I'm streaming so two and a half hours a night or something like that and yeah, it might turn out that I'm streaming making a modelled railway on stream. Ah oh dear. Oh, a thousand. Does he ever actually play that? Any of them, or does he just collect them? I know at one time I would kind of, I, I quite often would go into a a game shop. And actually, some of the ones in the UK are called game shop. Um, and every time I did that, I'd generally come out with a game on disc of some kind. And I've got, I've got, I've got. Well, I don't have the PS One games anymore, but because I've just 
relatively speaking, not so long ago, given them away. I've got stacks of PS2 games. I've got stacks of uh, games for the a uh, Dreamcast. I've got stacks of games for uh, a Wii um, controller, and uh, I got the Wii U and purposely go went. You know what? I'm only going to buy a game if I'm going to actually play it there and then. And I haven't bought any games <laughs> since then. I've got about two on there, but I haven't played any. I haven't bought any games, and I've gone really the other way now. I don't actually buy them if um, if I'm not actually going to go play it at this at the moment. And um, I think I've actually got two on Steam that I haven't actually played. Uh, that I kind of hope I'll get around to at some point. But I I, I see quite a few obviously with people streaming them. <laughs> <laughs> I've just read your last comment and uh, I, I keep going oh, that looks good, I'd love to play that and then I think, but when? You know, I'll buy it when I want to play it I think there's there's one, was it? the um, oh I can't remember now there, there's, uh, I keep wanting to see the Pandora Principle but it's not um something to do with light laser beams on uh, um, that's been streamed a lot on Twitch relatively recently but I've looked at that and it's a puzzle game and I look at that oh that'd be great to play and I, I keep looking at Steam and go mm, no I'll wait but yeah I, <laughs> I find that funny can't play them because he runs Linux uh, Oh, that that contraption. That's a bit of a rude Goldberg stuff thing, isn't it? It's. Um, uh, I think I've seen that. I've seen a few people play it, something like that, anyway. And uh, the um, strikes me as being interesting as a puzzle. You know, those things are interesting as a puzzle game, but. Uh, I, they don't hold my attention quite as much as um, some of the others. There's, uh, I don't know what it is. It's probably just the, maybe it's just the graphical thing. I was trying to think. There's, there's one which is uh, like an alien machine factory thing, which also has been around just recently. That one kind of. It, interest me a little bit more but uh, hmm. yeah, I've got a uh, I've now got a marker I've got to lose this mark um, there's a there's like a one of the fur transitions I've got a uh, just like a um, what's it an, an edge that I can see. I need to. I need to lose that edge. Dotting about all over this uh, things, uh, this piece in a way. If there's anybody else around watching stream, feel free to drop into chat. You know, have your have your own say on computer games. You don't have to let me dominate the chat, which is really clever considering I'm speaking and not typing at all. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of true. Uh, yeah, it does. It does happen. It does does sometimes happen like that, doesn't it? I'm getting them cheaper that way. I, as I say, I've kind of got built a got a, a policy in my mind these days. Is yeah, you know, it it could you know uh, almost uh, you pick. I don't know. I'm trying to think of something now, but you know, I pick, if even if I pick a game I've always wanted to want it to play and it's normally sort of 40 quid shall we say, or 40, 40 pounds 50 dollars something like that and you know it could come up for sale on Steam or Humble Bundle or anything at one dollar or and I'd probably still go 
you know what I'll wait because <laughs> I probably won't play it anyway then I've spent a dollar which I wouldn't have spent if I waited you know so it wasn't a bargain because I bought something I didn't actually want or use or something but I'm not quite that disciplined but not not if it was a dollar but you know if it was half price I'd be going you know what now nah, I'll wait but uh, fair play to anybody who can uh, can do it and can actually play the games I don't quite understand the concept of collecting them on Steam though I could understand collecting the the physical games because you, you especially some of the old you know the older games because you always got a nice box uh, if the C, if the CD came in a case as well it had a cover on it you got a, a game manual of some kind uh, and if I go back to like the old Infocom games you used to get a story you get I don't know hint books and and everything lots of things like that and and I mean the Infocom games they used to throw in props shall we say um, so if there was a I don't know a cocktail glass in in the game somewhere you might get a little miniature cocktail glass in the box uh, why is anybody's guess but um, yeah there was something to collect then really these days it's it's a um, it's a 16 digit number that you type into Steam and and it's kind of like it's a bit of code I don't even have to have it on my PC to collect it but anyway um, okay again yeah, the Blackwell series isn't actually something I'm aware of I I don't follow um don't kinda of don't follow the industry. if I'm bored I'll look for something at the time and I'll just I literally will look through until I find you know, look through Steam say until I find something that goes. That catches my attention. I buy books in much the same way. I don't uh or rather yeah with books I'm slightly different. There's a few authors that I'd buy. I, I read science fiction generally. Uh, or a certain section of science fiction and there's certain authors that I uh, would have and some of them still would I'd, I'd, if they brought out a new book I'll just buy it there's no uh, no question of, about over buying it I'll just actually go on and buy it and I mean that was I used to do that when when I bought um, physical books and these days it's uh, a Kindle and I, I buy you know electronic books but at least they take up less space and I can take them all with me on holiday but um, you know, um, one of the authors that I do that with is, is an author, science fiction author called Anne, Anne McCaffrey unfortunately she's no longer with her, with us but she did Dragons of Pern and some um, telepathy mental powers type books and uh, what was the other one? Um, Brain Ships uh, series. You may or may not be familiar with them, but when whenever she wrote a book, I'd just buy it. Yeah, and that's kind of why. That's kind of you know him having that problem is um, is it, that's the problem I was having with books, and, and you know once once I heard about um, electronic books I I wanted one for purely that reason you can put half a library on uh, you know on a memory card the first book reader I got I had I had a memory card for it so I could take every in theory I could take every single book that I had there just weren't that many around electronically but that literally the space I'm sat now at now used to be a really wide bookshelf about this wide actually the space you can see so you know, that's about a foot wide I used to have two rows of books stacked floor to ceiling and um, so I couldn't actually have sat here really well I suppose I could but the desk wouldn't have been here and that was 
just in just in this small section which is eight foot wide that had a few quite a lot of books in I don't actually know how many they've all gone and whilst most of well I haven't exactly bought all of them again but quite a few of my favorite ones I've bought again electronically and of course I've got all of that lot in just with me wherever wherever I go so I've got a lot more space back <laughs> But I've kind of stopped collecting books as well. I just buy I just buy buy them serially these days. I finish a book and I'll have a look at what I want to get next. It's a pity you can't do with games what you do with uh, what you can do with books on on Amazon. You know you can um, you can try it out. You can read five percent or three percent, whatever it is they give you of the book and see whether you actually like it before you actually go ahead and purchase it. It'd be really good to be able to do that with games. But there again I suspect if they did that um, with a lot of games they probably wouldn't sell quite as many. <laughs> If there's anybody on stream who doesn't actually know what uh, I'm doing, apart from feel free, you know, feeling free to uh, to ask or ask a question about it, this is pyrography. I'm using a heated tool here uh, to cook the contents of the fibre, uh, the wood fibres, and doing so making them go brown which is what you're seeing develop as I move the I call it a pen generally across the surface of the wood here hmm, I wonder if that actually looks better or whether it still looks bad but I shall carry on I think I'm going to carry on until I've done all the all the dark stuff uh, around his face and then then we'll see whether it actually starts to look any better and if it doesn't then that will be the time to uh, to do the filing. Yeah, the only time um any time I've seen the odd demo it's been not of game content, shall we say? So it's like a you know a chapter that isn't in the game, and at which point it's kind of, I kind of look at it and go, well, what's the point? I can't actually play what you're showing me. So it you know it doesn't represent the game at all. But uh, Interestingly, uh, this afternoon, oh, this afternoon while I was at work, <laughs> I had about ten minutes spare while I was doing waiting for something to finish, and I started looking at, at some of the uh, pyrography videos. Uh, the gamer, thank you very much for following. That's most kind of you. Thank you. Glad you um, are liking what you're seeing enough to want to uh, to express your. Uh, opinion there and hopefully come back and see some more. I do other things as well. It's not all about pyrography in case you think you might get bored of it. Do some carving and uh, we do some uh, what's it scraper board? Oh, I intentionally to do some scraper board. I've done exactly one piece and I did that on stream and it turned out rather well and I've tried uh, something else called punch craft which might get uh, might get done on stream again uh, at some point and what was I saying oh yes I was watching um, I went on to YouTube and was watching an artist uh, a paragraphic artist called Jean Buick B-O-U-I-C-K and um, 
she's an amazing pyrographer comes out with some absolutely stunning images uh, especially of animals um, but she does do other things and uh, kind of looking at that and thinking I ought to try that technique that she does and unfortunately you know, she's an excellent artist she's been doing it for absolutely years and of course whatever she does and it, she does it in time lapse as well which yeah, but whatever she does looks absolutely fantastically easy <laughs> and even me who does this knows it's not absolutely fantastically easy I'm still kind of fooled by it and going oh it's just a case of yeah, just do this, just do that <laughs> and hey Pester you've got this wonderful image and it's uh, she's got probably thousands of hours of, of practice and um, uh, I, I'm getting fooled by it ok and good evening there to uh, uh, Kulinab and to A. William sorry I'm, uh, I'm kind of a little bit carried away there I didn't look up at, at chat um, and our oh, gluten free gamers uh, uh, what's he doing tonight is he doing um, it, uh, on the 24 hours 25 hour stream the only bit I caught was when he was preparing to do uh, he some t-shirt printing but Oh, he's hosting. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Screen printing. Ah, okay. Yeah. I I I missed the bit where he actually created this, the 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 screen. I never actually seen that done. I'll have to keep looking in. Um. <laughs> heat treated art. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, metal heat treating, so you're creating it's sort of blooming the colours on on the uh, on the metal. That'd be interesting. Are any pictures of that? Yes, it is, William. I gave up on it last night, uh, but after the stream, whilst I was watching um, Free and and Bubbles and a couple of other people, I was just kind of doodling with it, and I started darkening the fur, and it started to look better. As you can see, I was dotting all over the place here, so I thought. Kind of don't like giving up on it, and I th and I just wondered whether it was. Um, there's lots of little things that are wrong, and one of the big things it was the colour. I know when I did junior uh, here, having one of the things I couldn't get the shading right, and I just went and Molly well, said to me, so, "Okay, well let's let's make the all of his fur darker because it, it was like this, very light." as the first pass and I just couldn't get the shading and so I, I went through and darkened it and then I didn't have a problem after that and I'm kind of wondering if I'm doing the same sort of thing with here if I darken it down um, I'll get something which takes away one of the it's not a mistake but it kind of takes away one of the points of it don't look right and then I, you know, others I can I can spot I in doing this I spotted a little bit of, of the wrong fur angle and uh, I've corrected that a little bit and this side of the face now starts to look better to me I may have to darken the white areas down as well a bit more I've done a bit down here but a bit more again and I think that might just make it look a little bit you know takes an, away another thing and it, and it may just be you know chip away at the the little things that are not quite right and then uh, I can you know I'll have fixed everything it's 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 the old joke of how do you eat an elephant you know one bite at a time if you actually did eat an elephant which nobody does but it's that it's that sort of thing and I, I'm just kind of decided I'll, I'll at least have another you know darken the fur down and then we'll see how it goes um yeah that's why uh, start, uh, Kulena, uh Kulena B, that's why I started watching uh, watch uh, that's why I started watching him in the first place was the three d stuff he was doing and the uh, and sketchup uh I know it's the only <laughs> it's the only tool he was he, he had available to do what he was doing at the time to make his gluten free logo 
and it's kind of like um, 3D was on the um, same stream and I was talking to you know to my PC screen if you like and say there's a lot easier ways of doing that and, and 3 was going you know, if you had a vector program you'd have this done in about 5 seconds <laughs> kind of saying the same thing but you, you know vector programs cost money and uh, you know he and uh, SketchUp doesn't so he was using what he did oh no I understood he, he wasn't uh, hosting me I, I missed the fact that you said he was hosting somebody else I thought when I first read it I thought you meant he was actually streaming now um, so I'm catching up on chat um, okay oh don't worry about it that's not a problem if you don't want or, or aren't able to that's okay um, yeah it's his first week is it his first week I thought he'd been streaming about two weeks but it's come a hell of a long way but from what I gather he's an insomniac and he's probably streamed more in, in, in a week than most people stream in about a month uh, for, for what I remember he's done at least two 24 plus hour streams hasn't he yeah. Oh. Well, I would say, uh, Kalena, um, it's it's a little bit naughty to do that, by the way, um, because you can't ask the streamer. It's 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 lots of people don't re and and if somebody did it to me now, I'd I'd kind of be somewhat upset. You know, just come into a stream and advertise somebody else. So, you know, whilst uh, whilst a you know, thank you. I would prefer if you would been able to ask um, uh, gluten before before doing it. But okay, you know. Uh, week last Friday, yeah. Now, there's okay. I can't verify that, so I'm not going to. Uh, I can't. You know, I can't uh, offer an opinion either way. Um, I'll have to take your word for it. Um, the okay, uh, on most of the people I've come across on uh, um, in creative are less okay. They're not predatory, shall we say? <laughs> <laughs> about about it, you know, yeah. and, and I'll put it as though stealing viewers from other places. Um, it, 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 and, and I know that wasn't uh, wasn't and isn't the intention, and that's you know that's not how how it works. But there's, you know, we are well, most of us seem to be a, a really friendly sort of bunch, and um, yeah, you know, if if you if you do listen to me, uh, um, you know, uh, bubbles to monkey. Uh, there who's who's been in stream as you know she she streams uh bead bead art perla type things most people i guess understand the the perla uh and and making you know making art out of these beads and she's an excellent streamer we kind of advertise each other you'll hear me talking about 3d block and um and things you know uh, who who was an airbrush artist so you know we we kind of in uh, do it but i mean if you went I would say if you went on a, a game stream and did that, that <laughs> a lot of the streamers, uh, there'd be quite a quite a reaction. But okay, All right? No, okay. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not upset or anything. I'm not, I'm not going to go around banning everybody. It's, it, it, it's nice to keep it friendly, shall we say? And I think that's that's the nice thing about the creative section at the moment. It's really friendly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, I would say let, let's, 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 there's not really anything to get upset over. That's all. I, and, and I'm not. Uh, I'm not having a, a go at you. I'm not upset with you. I'm not going to shout at you, ban you, or anything like that. You know, it's. Uh, uh, if things are as you say, then there isn't a problem, and I don't have a problem with it either. You know, the more people that watch the uh, people being creative, the more the the whole section grows, and the more more people watch. It's it's um. Uh, it's one of these things that people bring people, isn't it? 
Mm. Yes, now then, I am trying to look at this pussy cat face, and hopefully I'm going to get uh, better. But uh, thank you, and but thank you for watching me anyway. Whether you tell anybody else or not, I don't mind. That's uh, yeah. You're finding it interesting enough to to stick around, even with me making comments about you. <laughs> oh dear. So thank you, thank you for being here. And anybody else who is also watching on stream. I do appreciate the people that watch. And uh, uh, whether whether you wish to lurk or participate in chat, I don't mind either way. Um, if you just wish to lurk and there is nobody participating in chat, you may find um, you keep hearing me repeat the same things again and again. Um, if you don't. Uh, particularly care for that say hello and we can talk about something else but <laughs> I tend to go into teaching mode when uh, when there isn't a lot of conversation and I'll start telling you exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and what the tools are and everything like that um, okay well <laughs> Didn't need you to wake him up <laughs> Ah oh dear. And thank you for uh, doing a job like that. They're valuable people. And uh, those those that do it are amazing people. So thank you. Oh, okay. Now of course, now, now that you actually want to know, I've got to... Uh <laughs> yeah. Um... That's okay. I um, that's kind of why if there is no chat going on, I do tend to ramble some or prattle on. Some might say, and I will start say, you know, but the usual sort of, you know, this is pyrography, and uh, I'm doing this, and and I do change it about a little bit. But if if somebody is lurking for more than about twenty minutes, they've probably heard it about four times. But um, total ninja kid cat, I said that. And then realised I hadn't said it wrong. Uh, good evening and welcome again. How are you? Um, I don't like going into streams that are silent. I have to, um, and I don't like going into streams where they just play music either and, and are silent. But I, um, uh, unless I'm really, really, really interested in the subject matter, uh, if if the stream's you know silent, there's nobody talking then I'll go find somewhere else to watch. I, I can only watch it for so long, so that's one of the reasons why. But the other reason, you know, is I love doing this, and if I you know, inspire or encourage somebody else to have a go at uh, doing this, um, I was doing carving last week, and one guy, uh, you know, was, in, shall we say, inspired enough to go out and get his own set of chisels. Now his father was a carpenter, so it was probably, you know, uh, the desire was already there. So I kind of, you know, I'm quite pleased that it wasn't just a, a totally random thought. Hey, look what you know, Zaragoza Art's doing. Uh, I'll go get some chisels and I'll be able to do exactly that because I'd kind of feel bad if somebody did that because it, 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 you need to develop the skill before you can do it, but. The guy in this particular case, you know, his father, I say, being a carpenter, uh, had, had, you know, he probably had access to at least somebody who knew what they were doing enough to help him, you know, get started. And uh, but you know, that sort of thing is absolutely fantastic when somebody you know uh, looks at what you're doing and says, "Hey, I'd love to try something like that." And as I say, the I'm not a. I am not a teacher. I have done some lecturing. I did it for about a year and a half to two years. That's a long time ago, but it kind of built into me the fact of explaining things. I also do. I've have done in the past computer support, uh, but at desk computer support in the working environment. So I'm you know, sat by somebody or knelt by somebody usually, and. You know, would be explaining what's gone wrong or what they need to do and, and again it was a training thing and so it, it's kind of got in, built into me and now I'm sat here and I'm kind of just do the same thing 
Um, yeah. Well, I'm kind of hoping it, it is. I mean, the Twitch is... Uh, the Twitch creative stuff, I think, is... It has a potential for really taking off. I mean, it seems to, you know, the, the, the diversity of things. I mean, I was watching the other night somebody making chain mail panels and, and the, you know, there was a guy in the stream last night, unfortunately I've forgotten his name, you know, he was making his business sign out of chain mail. So he's creating a picture, you know, in a, in a banner format, out of chain, called a chain mail. Uh, the sculptors on there, uh, which I find absolutely fascinating to watch, uh, how they, they do it. There's a, another couple of guys doing pyrography as well. Um, and I, I love watching the physical creative people. I, I don't mind watching, and I do watch a couple of the electronic art people. I do that sort of thing myself. Um, but I, I love watching the physical arts. So, you know, uh, Bubbles, who was making the... Uh, uh, Bubbles de Mink... De, uh, Bubbles de Monkey, who was making the... Uh, bead out 3D who does airbrushing learning some tips out of stuff that he does uh, that's another thing I do but not on stream um, and you know that sort of thing certainly I, I've only relatively recently discovered in like in about the past month ish discovered Twitch creative section that was, I only found that out because I follow one of the create the electronic artists who stream in a game section and one day I saw in his title you know on creative I thought what's this creative went and looked and I've not watched another stream out of creative since then <laughs> and I don't watch television so um, I have been in creative uh, ever since then on on Twitch, and even the other, even the other gamers that I used to watch, and there's about only you know half a dozen. I've not watched any of their streams. <laughs> um, they're kind of hmm, not interested anymore, really. Yeah, this is one of the things about. Pyrography. Uh, I have been over this piece of wood uh, once to create this colour. I'm now going over it again. I'm going over it really slowly because it's actually not really taking much of a colour. It's taking quite a long time, relatively speaking, as I'm moving this pen for the colour to to arrive. So it's it's going really. This just this bit is going really slow. It's just the characteristic of the wood, but it's something that you have to deal with and work around or work with. Um, it's one of the challenges of the art form. But if everything was dead easy, it would probably be boring. Um, It's an interesting question, uh, William. Is that? It's um, depends on what what you're interested in doing, really. I guess to some extent, um, because uh, the trick is not to go overboard when you start. I think and that's so easy to do and that's what makes things look expensive I mean I'm kind of a miser when it comes to physical art because I don't want to waste the materials so I don't start things with them and of course if you don't do anything you can't start you don't waste anything but you don't actually do anything so but I mean let's if you take carving for example let me just throw something out here. Um, I've got a knife here. Uh, have I still got a price on it? Let me have a look. No, I don't. I can't actually remember. 
but I've got I've got a a, a knife here, which is a, um this is a detail knife, good enough for most uh, uh, hand carry. You use this what people probably call traditionally sort of whittling. Um, but you know you, you've got a, a block of wood and you're carving out of it with this. Now this, I, I can't actually remember the prices of this. Let me say I, I kind of want to say it's around thirty UK pounds, which is about forty dollars ish, something like that anyway. But that's all like that, and a piece of wood is all I need. Now a piece of wood can be any scrap of wood. You know, there are certain woods which are easier to use and there are certain woods which make life easier as a beginner at, at the art form uh, because they you know they just react better but you know uh, two by two pine is not uh, not a, a really good wood to use and but it's not a really hard wood to use either and two by two pine because it, it gets used everywhere and I guess you guys in um, that are in America you know wood is used in a lot of um, home construction more than it is potentially over here. That sort of stuff is is relatively cheap, uh, or even offcuts that people just throw out. So you know, for you know, thirty, forty dollars, thirty quid, you can start an art form. And only as you get you know get practice and you start to learn, do you add you know another knife to it or something like that. Um, you know, I have two. And that's all I've got in terms of knives. Kept in here because they're extremely sharp and it keeps them safe. Um, you know, so yes, I've got a lot more carving, uh, sorry, a lot more chisels than that. But there again, you know, I started with a relatively small kit and built up from there. Orange currency, good evening. I take it you're referring to the, the cat images rather than the knife. <laughs> Um, but William, you know, if you're interested in modelling, for example, cardboard uh, to develop the skills and develop the sort of things that you want to do. So cardboard, you probably only want a craft knife. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a few dollars for something like that. You can stick things together with sticky tape. Right, you know, or you know, you who sorry, you uh, uh, PVA glue that sort of thing. Relatively cheap materials, as long as you don't, um, you know just don't go overboard. I mean I'm using a wood burner here. This wood burner is you know well up over a hundred dollars at least. I can't actually remember what it is. I think it was over a hundred pounds. Um, and I paid that. I, I, you know, I've got fixed tips which are more expensive. You can use replaceable ones which are cheaper. So you only need one pen with lots of tips. This is a dual burner. I've got two pens plugged in. Um, you can get a single pen, which is cheaper. So you can you know, start small um, and, and try things out. And if you don't like them, you've not wasted a lot of money that way. Um, it is, uh, and I agree with you in terms of it's, it's 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 like you know a bad chisel or a cheap chisel isn't necessarily cheap. I've got to say of really cheap chisels which I was got for I was given as a as a present and unfortunately they're blunt they're really not that sharp and I have tr tried sharpening them and I will keep trying to sharpen them because they were given to me as a present and I will probably succeed at one point because I've just got some new honing uh, stones as well um, to, to try and do that so but you know the I've spent hours trying to sharpen those and you know if I tried to use them I would be seriously dangerous and more likely to cut myself than a piece of wood so I agree with you there is a point but how do you know what's good unless you've got a little bit of experience of it you know you're saying good clay and um, I think there's uh, the I forgot his name uh, he was in the stream yesterday. I went and watched him after the stream. Uh, he he models with uh, oil-based clay rather than water-based clay because he says basically it doesn't dry out um, and doesn't make such a, as much of a mess. But I wouldn't have known that 
um, and I've no idea whether there's a difference in cost of it but to some extent you know how much do you want of it yeah um, you know it, yeah, I suppose it can come in sort of 50 50 pound bags for example or you can get you know a relatively ex expensive but a cup sized uh, block from a craft shop you know it might it might relatively speaking be be very expensive you know, like 10 or 15 dollars if you like but compared with 56 pounds that may be sort of 50 dollars just to make some prices up because I've got absolutely no idea but that sort of thing so but you know it gives you a chance to play with it do you know and and I'm sure there's lots of tools available for clay modeling but for example if I was going to start and I'd no idea yeah you know, I might just use a, a knife like that the reason being it's scalpel so I can cut it but the scalpel is flat so I can smooth with it and I can turn it round and I've also got a smooth edge here for example so without getting any other tools something like that okay that costs me but there again that's a tool I already have for working with other model materials so I I understand where you're coming from and I often look at things and go you know that's expensive to do it properly and, and I also forget that sometimes you know, pair it, to pair it back to what do I actually need to just try it and see whether I like it or whether I can do something. And uh, you know, if you would like to try uh, clay modelling or, or sculpting, then you know, try and work out what would be the cheapest way that you could do it with you know reasonable material. And sorry, Orange County, I. Uh, now I've spent quite some time you know, talking and not actually doing anything with this. Thank you for the uh, the fact that it's nice. <laughs> I'm kind of laughing because all day on the stream yesterday, I this looked well it looked to me as the artist absolutely terrible. It did not look right. I looked at the face of this cat and at one point it looked to me like a fox. At another time it looked like a bear still looks a bit like a teddy bear at the moment and I just could not get it to look anything like the the reference image that you can see at the bottom left of the screen and uh, at, at the end of last night's stream I had decided to abandon this and file it in in the round portfolio which is like a round filing cabinet as or otherwise known as the bin and um, I was I was uh, fiddling with it after my stream while I was watching others last night, like Bubbles the Monkey, who's um, I suspect um, now uh, moved on to look at another stream. But she's an excellent uh, streamer doing uh, um, bead art. Um, although don't talk a great deal, <laughs> you don't talk a great deal, Bubbles. Uh, you just you play a lot of nice music, but you don't talk a great deal. Um, and whilst I was you know, watching Bubbles and a few other people, I was uh, I was just you know messing about with it really because I hate not finishing a piece. I love to understand why it doesn't work. And I just started darkening the area, and it started to look better. So I carried on. It was something that happened with this other piece that I've got here. Uh, but for uh, for a different reason um, that I actually went and darkened the fur after I'd done it the first pass and that helped me out on there so when I started to see it react on here and, and thought well that's starting to look better that I, I gave it another chance shall we say and that's what I'm slowly working on now uh, when I remember to actually work on it whilst I'm talking as opposed to stop and move my hands around that must be fascinating for you guys watching me just wave my hands around. <laughs> uh, dear. But there again, if anybody is on stream and hasn't worked out what it is I'm doing, um, this is pyrography. That's to give it its technical term. Sometimes gets called wood burning, um, which is you know kind of comes from the name pyro is is heat or fire really and graphy actually means writing 
um, and you can sort of understand there where wood burning comes from but in actual fact there is no burning of wood going on here at all this is uh, what's what happens uh, with what I'm doing here is the heat of the tool is drawing the liquid content of the wood fibre out and is cooking it. I describe that as sap. I don't actually technically know whether the contents of the wood fibre is sap, but it's it it's sort of the liquid that is inherent in the wood is coming out, is being cooked very much like maple syrup if you're familiar with that, and in doing so it's going uh, you know this golden and dark and dark brown, and that's been you know, is is then sitting on the surface of the wood and colouring it and I, you know, I can scrape it off for example so there are other there are other pyro, well there are other techniques of pyrography where you would get fairly close to burning the wood it, it, you carbonise the wood so you effectively turn, turn it into a, um, a thin layer of charcoal which is about as close as, as most pyrographers get to burning wood uh, but there are also pyrographers out there who will who they'll work on a bigger piece, mind you know, several feet by several feet, but will use blow torches. So they're actually using real live flames, and I suppose technically they are burning wood. And actually, when you watch them, you can see the wood's on fire. So they're burning wood. I'm I'm painting it with cook sap. <laughs> Uh, but I'm doing it in a in, in a in a uh, all in one action. You can also do. I mean, I'm doing pyrography here on wood. It's um, it's birch plywood. Both you know, both the fact it's birch and the fact it's plywood is is good for pyrography the birch because it's a light wood and one you know, the art form is is defined by the shades I mean even just in front of you here we've got one two three four five six seven eight different shades possibly nine different shades or ten if you include the uncolored wood ten different shades of, of brown although you may be seeing some of them as black especially since the camera isn't fantastic at picking up some of the shades so you might see like the eyes as being black they're a real dark brown so I've got 10 different shades here if I use a darker wood and just as an example I'll show you some darker wood then there is less range of colour so I'll just show you another piece this is done on, on hardboard I do it on hardboard because for, uh, when I'm practicing because basically this is cheap <laughs> and in fact I've got a load of this for nothing so it's even cheaper than than that um, and, and I can practice on here but the range of shades I can get on here is less than on the white wood if, if you look at it logically I can uh, shade the white wood until it's this color which is where this starts as its base colour and then I can go dark on here I can't go lighter so I can't get some of the very light shades like around here which you may or may not actually you can see you can see this one this sort of triangular piece here is a light shade you can't really see one that's here um, I can't get something that light on here it just doesn't it doesn't come that light so uh, the you know that's that's one reason why the colour of the wood matters and and the wood itself, the characteristics of the wood in terms of the grain also make life easier. The hardboard is is um, is quite good because when you apply wood to heat, or actually when you apply heat to wood, do it the other way. You probably have a fire. Um, when you apply heat to wood, the wood actually shrinks effectively is what it's doing because I'm drawing the liquid out of the the fiber the wood the wood fiber shrink and it 
you know, if the piece of wood is thin enough, uh, you can actually warp the wood. And this this actually is is slightly warped. You may or may, able to, may or may not be able to see it, but it is actually slightly warped. I can correct that warp, but it is actually warped. Now, the hardboard, the construction, sorry, of the plywood, the, the construction of the plywood actually resists that warping. So on a thin piece like this, the fact it's plywood helps enormously. It would otherwise tend to curve in, in all sorts of directions. Uh, as uh, with with this amount of heat being applied to the to the surface of it, if it was a solid piece of wood, um, so that's um, you know that's that's one of the things you, wood uh, wood choice uh, matters. Um, but you can actually do it on other things. It is possible to do it on card, thick card, uh, or even thick paper, thin paper like photocopy paper, for example is not a good choice. It burns through so fantastically quickly uh, even on, on really light settings. Let's see if I can do a piece, Let's see if I can just do some. Um, see, no, as, as a really light setting, I've just touched that and I've got to, really, got to be really fast. I don't want to put my finger underneath because this is hot. Um, and you might have seen the smoke come off. It's really hard on this paper to do it. I don't want to put this down. I'll burn the wood underneath. But even if I just leave it for a very short period of time, this is really hard to do. And essentially, it's going almost as dark as I can get it. And I'm not. I'm not trying to get it dark. I'm trying to get it really light. Now, if I just hold it for a fraction of a second too long, I've now burnt almost literally burnt right the way through. And. Um, it smells like burning paper. You probably saw the smoke coming off. And try as I might, I really am trying really hard here to try and create a light tone. I possibly could do it with a lot more practice, but about now that, ow, yeah, that's um, that's about as, as as best I can do on paper. And if I hold it just a second longer than that I've actually burnt through the paper and it will drop apart so thick thick paper uh, which is or thin very thin card you can do it on you can also do it on leather um, <laughs> gluten free gamer so Kalena B thank you very much <laughs> for the hosting um, and, and gluten if you're watching thank you very much if I understand you may have been got up to do that but thank you. Uh, you can do it on leather uh, as well. Uh, you, you can apply, uh, you know, create images with with heat on leather, and uh, it can also be done on bone uh, as well. I understand bone's quite hard to uh, a relatively hard substance to work on. Uh, the characteristics of bone make it quite awkward to work on, and also I understand the smell isn't very good. Are very pleasant, but um, you know that's that is another media for for pyrography. I'm not particularly aware of any others. Ivory has been used in the past. Can't do that these days. Ivory is a proscribed uh, material. Uh, you you just can't do anything with it. And yeah, so whilst whilst there are um, even some museum pieces of, of pyrography done on ivory, which I believe gets called scrimshaw. Then uh, you know you you unfortunately or fortunately whichever way you look at it you can't uh, you can't do that these days. Wood generally is the easiest to work on. I did mention um, you know the different styles of of pyrography as well. I I, I am predominantly almost exclusively an image based artist so I'm I am my the focus of the art that I like doing is to get close to reality I won't say any of these are particularly you know um, what often gets called hyper real you know you can't tell the difference between a photograph clearly you can and they don't they don't look like a photograph but they are uh, accurate representations and they look really good he says boasting 
Um, so, yeah, my, my focus is on realistic looking art. There are pyrographers that do uh, geometric patterns, for example. Actually, I thought another material that's often done, gourds are often uh, done with pyrography as well, because that burns quite nicely. Bit of a smell, I understand, but better than bone. Um, you can uh, you, you know you get uh, geometric shapes people that do that and use cross hatching techniques to create different patterns that's one that is often seen on on gourds um, is is sort of ge geometric patterns and cross cross hatch style shading and uh, then you get the uh, the type of artist that will use what is effectively a brand or a stamp uh, based tool to create patterns, images, whatever. Generally, those there are doing that using uh, effectively carbonizing, so they're using a black and white style basically. And you also get pyrography artists that will do cartoon style or anime style. Uh, the typical uh, characteristic being like a black outline, which is then filled in with color. So, you know, there, there's a whole range of, of art forms that are available. Can all be done with the different tools. It's the, you know, the tool that I'm using makes this art form or this art style easier for me. Somebody else doing exactly the same art form may, would, you know, could use uh, some of the other styles of tool available and produce better images than I can. You know, and so it's it is a skill based art form. It's not a it's not actually based on on the particular tools that you've got. They make it easier when you have the skill to do it. And skill just comes from practice. You know, it's not uh, it's not a magic formula. It's I know people often talk about being born with a skill or not. I think people are born with the ability. to learn more quickly a skill and that's perhaps why people think you know somebody's born with it because they picked it up fairly rapidly but I think anybody can learn the skill if they wish to do so and, and they record and those you know if you wish to do it you recognize that you're going to need to practice and practice quite a lot I probably have a couple of hundred hours in terms of practice and I don't actually think I'm that I think I'm passable but not that good I am every piece I do I learn something new and sometimes I fail this was failing and it may still fail and I'm quite happy with that I'm not happy with wasting materials, but that's just me. I, I really dislike <laughs> wasting materials, uh, but uh, because, as as A. William mentioned earlier, some materials, you know, they're they're not cheap. It does cost, yeah. You know, it sounds daft. Wood doesn't grow on trees, and it kind of doesn't. Um, but you know, getting. Uh, high grade plywood for example you can get low grade plywood but it doesn't you know, doesn't necessarily work as easily for you you have to work harder you know, you have to have potentially have more skill to work with lower grade materials than you do to work you know to work with high grade materials so it it's an interesting dilemma but um if you if you recognize and are happy with the fact that you will have to practice then I think anybody can learn you know, a skill like this or like carving or chain mail or, or uh, painting and some people will take longer to learn than others and I think that's uh, you know, that's one of the nice things about Twitch that you can you can see people practicing the art forms as well and you can look at something and go you know what that looks really interesting I'd love to try that and then you can make a decision you can watch them and try and decide if they're if it's easy because they've got a lot of practice and they're making it look easy or it's easy because it really is 
easy to do. Um, and uh, I'm about to, to say something. I'm not. I really. I'm not intending to disparage anybody. But something like um, the bead art, for example, if you follow a pattern, then you are just taking a colour of bead and putting it in a square. That's an easy-ish action to do. It takes a lot of pay. Well, no, I was about to say it takes a lot of patience. That I can't say that because I don't know. Um, the level of skill is an easy one to learn. To to put these in without knocking them all over the place. There's then the skill of being able to read the pattern, and there's a further level of skill to, you know, to to build your own patterns, or even to work without a pattern, as some some people do, and it, it's a level of skill you can build up. And so it's it's easier to get started, whereas something like pyrography maybe is a bit harder to get started, uh, in that respect. But you know. Uh, I've seen, I've seen, as I say, I mentioned on stream earlier. There's, uh, if you want to see some excellent pyrography work, have a, a, a search on YouTube for either, well, either pyrography or, or specifically Gene Buick, B-O-U-I-C-K. That's G-E-A-N for for Jean. Um, she is an absolutely fantastic pyrographic artist. Uh, using tools similar to the ones I'm using here, pet images, scenes, absolutely fantastic. She makes it look really easy, and I am familiar with just you know the skills that need to be developed, and I'm fooled by the fact that she makes it look really easy. But have a look; uh, they're absolutely fantastic works um, that she does. Um, Certainly, were you know, if, if you have any interest at all in in pyrographic work, take a look. It's um, she's got some some amazing artwork. But having said that, you know, um, I do have a level of skill. So if anybody's got any particular questions about pyrography, I shall. I'm quite happy to try and answer them for you. Whether it's um, about what I'm doing or just pyrography in general, that's um, quite all right. You also see me doing um, carving on stream as well. I've uh, I'll, re we recently on stream we recently completed a a rose which was carved in relief carving uh, using hand based tools. And also, we recently did um, something called scraper board, which is effectively a sandwich of card paper and Indian ink. So the the piece looks black when you start it. You scrape it using sharp edge tools and create an image by scraping away the black ink, and you create a monochrome based image, which is. I find a fascinating uh, technique. Um, I'm doing monochrome here, monochrome uh, with the uh, scraper board. I do monochrome when I do airbrushing, although I don't airbrush on stream. Uh, monochrome is an art form which which I find fascinating to to do, but uh, that's a different subject. So you scra uh, scraper board. Um, pyrography, as you see here, and uh, also. I've missed the curve out of that, uh, as I say, and also um, carving. So you can see those. Uh, at the moment, I'm doing them in, in sort of a, a rotation. So I will finish a pyrography piece, and then probably move. The next thing will maybe to move on to a scraper board. I'll do a piece in that, and then I'll move on to carving, and we'll do a piece in carving. Uh, depending. On the complexity, you know, a piece can take. I think the carving took about a week and a half. I was working on particularly hard wood. I've now got some better wood to work with. Uh, pyrography piece generally takes uh, this style anyway. Generally takes about a week to do. The scraper board was about three days, so that was a quicker art form to do.
if you want to see any of those uh, done on the stream feel free to push that follow button the advert comes of course push the follow button and uh, and hopefully twitch will tell you if i go live um but you can also follow me on twitter as well if you like i about all i do tweet is the fact that i go live so uh, i won't be inundating you with tweets if you feel like you want to do that the details are below the the, the stream window but it's at zaragon art for the uh, for the twitter um, i'm looking at this i've got a di i've done it again i've got a direction of fur change when i've done an abrupt change and um, i can see the line i'm just now I'm going to do a little bit of work to just smooth that line away so I can't see the line. I'm really pushing textures around at this point. But if, if I don't do this then uh, in certain lights the, the texture causes the line to be more visible so just need to, to sort of move, uh, move the textures around to some extent. Every time I put this pen down uh, the the surface of the wood if kind of goes like soft is the best way of describing it so I can push it around a little bit and when I finish with this I'll have what looks like a uh, cat fur as you can see on, on Junior here who's Junior was the model for that particular piece he was a stray cat that adopted us. Actually, he was a feral cat that adopted us, which is, if anybody knows anything about cats, that basically means a wild cat. And he is now relatively, well, almost, I'll say almost completely tame. There's still, I'm still a bit wary about him sometimes. When he gets a bit excited, he can, um, he can get a little bit, you know, nippy, shall we say. But, uh, Right, so it's sort of looking a bit better. I, I am, you know, with with doing some work on the texture directions as well. I've still got a bit around here that's wrong. I need to work a little bit. It's sort of starting to look better. Last night, as I say, I was about to abandon it. Um, I think this is yeah, maybe maybe if I carry on, we can actually re you know recover this piece to something that I consider to be at least passable. And if I'm lucky, will be even better than that. Now, if anybody is wondering, that I am, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using an electrically heated tool here. The tool is plugged into the mains, uh, and the heat is actually being produced directly at the end here. No, well, heat shouldn't be, be being produced anywhere else in the tool. <laughs> um, if if it does, that's if the <laughs> the reason I say it shouldn't be is. Heat is being produced because current electric electric current is being passed through this tip here, and it's resisting that current. And when 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 something that resists current, you pass heat through it. So it pass current through it. It heats up. That's how electric fires work. That's how kettles work by passing a, an electric current through generally a coil of wire, which is resisting that. In this particular case, this is just a. a a single piece of wire that's been uh, squashed flat but um, equally if there is a, a contact which isn't quite as good as it could be and these connectors here are not the greatest for this so if, the, if they have a slight amount of resistance then as the current is passing through this very slight amount of resistance it heats up so these two tend to become a, a little bit warm at times and if I find it like I just did then, I will actually just pull the uh, the socket out and just uh, make sure it's it's a tight fit, and then it doesn't actually heat up. But um, the heat there is just sort of it's pleasantly warm type of thing. The heat at this end is 200 degrees or more, and it's uh, you know it's it's cooking this this wood. 
But having said, you know, it's electrically heated, it's plugged into the mains, there isn't mains at this end here. Um, the the voltage is, is between, I can't remember exactly what it is for this machine, but between one and a half and three volts. That's the equivalent of one or two AA batteries. So, a torch, basically. Uh, the, the current is quite a bit more, but it is actually safe to touch. Um, I'm not touching it though, even though it is safe to touch from an electrical point of view, I'm not touching it because it's hot. As I mentioned, 200 degrees, I will burn myself and I don't want to do that. But if, you know, just to illustrate the point of safety, that's, you know, here we've got a point and the side here, they're the two contacts which go down to, to the tip there, I'm quite happy to do that. No problem at all. There's, you know, it's like touching both ends of a battery, you actually can't feel it. So it, 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 it's safe from that perspective, but it, you know, because of the hot end, it's not something that you're going to give to a, to a three-year-old to play with, for example. You know, anybody, any young children would need to be supervised because of the heat, and especially because I'm making, um, I'm making marks on this piece of wood here. It will equally well make marks on the desk if I was started drawing on the desk. So, you know, thank you. If it is uh, to somebody who has not necessarily got the uh, an understanding of uh, the dangers of the heat or uh, where things are right to be put and not right to be put, then then you would obviously want to supervise uh, somebody. And probably actually, this type of tool, if it, if you were interested in getting children involved in it, or at least responsible children, it's hot not to forget that. This is probably a better style of tool to, for them to, to use because it works more like a pencil. As you can see I'm holding it quite comfortably like a pencil and if I put that down you know the, the construction of it tends to keep that tip away from touching anything. I mean I can put it on something where it would touch and quit down on a piece of wire or something like that but generally speaking it's sort of easier the the other type of tool which you often see in hobby shops or craft shops looks more like a soldering iron um, it generally has a big chunky handle a, a long silver barrel with the the tip on the end and often you get uh, stamps to go in the end and to change the end you've actually got a pair of take a pair of pliers or something to hold it to unscrew it and screw another one in and then you're left with a hot tip to, to do something with I mean if I turn this off in about 30 seconds this is cool enough to be wary about touching and it, after a minute this is this is completely cold um, but you know some of the the tips that you get with the stamp type machine hold heat for quite a long time so you need a glass jar or something to put them in um, but just being such a big chunky tool, um, they're not necessarily as easy for a young person to hold. I mean, they're big and chunky, which makes them easy to hold, but because they're big and chunky, they're a bit harder to control. So, you know, it's... Um, uh, and uh, it's very easy to put one of those down in such a way that you're going you're gonna to mark things. But, you know with supervision anything uh, either of them are, uh, are excellent tools unfortunately these are probably more expensive than the, those other type that you will often see in craft shops okay I'm um, talking about them being you know the temperature by the way I'm cleaning the tip here I'm cleaning the underneath of the tip I'm rubbing this on paper it's kitchen paper uh, not quite as bad as tissue paper, but I, uh, actually it's not particularly bringing anything off. Uh, but as you can see, I'm not making any marks on it, it's not sitting on fire. But just to illustrate the point, um, <laughs> he says, um, uh, I, I was expecting that to burn through the paper. It didn't. <laughs> um, why is it? That's interesting. That's interesting. This tip, this this tip is cold. Um, 
No, I'm not going to touch it to show you it's cold. What it'll be is I've not made a good contact. The um, it does rely, uh, and this is one of the um, this is one of the de uh, would say uh, disadvantages of this tool, if you like, the fact that the cables do come off, which which is an advantage in that you can change the the tools. Uh, I can quite easily change from that one to another one, just by unplugging it and plugging it back in um, but it has to make a good contact if it doesn't make a good contact then you don't get any current flow if you don't get any current flow it doesn't heat up and this was cold so obviously I'm not making a good enough contact that's better that's heating up a bit now now is this going to do what I expected it to do yeah it just burns straight through as you can see there that's probably why I thought it needed cleaning because it wasn't actually making a mark uh, because it wasn't on. Um, but yes, now that it is on, uh, I am again rubbing it on the paper so you know, it doesn't instantly burn into flames. Um, but if I held it in one place, then um, it will burn through the paper. It won't. Uh, it won't burst into flames. It's not hot enough to do that, but uh, it will seriously carbon, make it turn it into carbon, and you'll get that burnt paper smell which was the smoke that you might have seen coming off. Right, so, having discovered that it was, um, wasn't was heating up, that, ex that will explain why I wasn't uh, getting brown marks. Uh, which is why I thought it was, uh, was, was dirty. What, uh, what happens, although I'm not actually I mentioned a few times I'm not burning anything here I am just heating up the the liquid which is in the fibers of the wood um, like any sort of a pan if you don't I guess pan you know uh, if you don't clean it the this liquid you know does tend to collect on the bottom and it will cook more and more and more and it coats the bottom or the edge that I'm using and it actually will insulate it from the wood, but uh, wood as well, which which is you know causes it to be harder to uh, to make it go brown. But the uh, the other thing about uh, uh, about that uh, is I'm also moving texture around here. As I'm doing that, I'm breaking off little tiny bits of the wood fibre as well and they're sticking to the tip and they're sort of getting cooked and carbonizing a little bit and if this uh, as I say if, if there's sufficient build up the heat doesn't get to where you're working it stops it stops it going brown like this it's as though it's turned off um, but also if I get build up of carbon carbon is actually quite hard as I'm doing this I'll actually feel it scraping uh, and scratching and I actually will get scratch marks if I um, uh, carried on so yeah, that's why you'll often see me get the piece of paper just put it down just clean the tool just so that I a remove any carbon deposits and B I um, remove any residue from from this uh, browning process now the more the hotter this tool is the more likely I am to get the uh, carbon build up on it uh, and the less I actually am likely to get uh, the build up of the uh, uh, this brown glaze is a best, uh, good enough word for it, perhaps, or you know the sap or whatever, however you wish to describe this this liquid. So even even with pyrography, you know, it's uh, whilst I'm doing carving, and you can watch me when I carve, I'll frequently be sharpening or polishing, sharpening chisels to keep them really sharp. Uh, you might think there isn't a lot to maintain with with pyrography. You do have to keep your tips clean, just as uh, as much as as other tools need to be maintained for other other crafts as well. That's actually looking a lot better. It looks like he's got a bit of a flat head. I think I probably want to get a little bit more of a curve into it if I can. 
uh, in doing this it's uh, you are if you you can see it, I'm not sure it, it's his, his head has got a tendency to look flat because all the hair texture I'm creating is going in sort of a straight line and it should actually be curving as it goes over the top of the head so I, I probably need to just build in a little bit more of a curve of the work <laughs> now now William you're scooting close to the limit there Uh, yes, but um, yes, look after your tools is is the uh, the maxim. If you look after the tools, they will do what you want them to do. I suppose the the the, the phraseology has always been look after your tools and look after you, but that kind of needs to be interpreted, um, you know, uh, to 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 get the best out of that saying. Uh, it's it's the carving is one that. Um, I associate more with that a sharp chisel is less dangerous than a blunt chisel if you have a blunt chisel you are more likely to cut yourself you know uh, hurt yourself damage the piece than if a chisel is extremely sharp if nothing else people tend to respect really sharp objects and keep your fingers away from it uh, you understand the dangers you, people don't understand the dangers actually of a blunt chisel a blunt knife uh, imagine for example if you just something as, as simple as trying to cut a steak if you have a really sharp steak knife and they give you generally in, in restaurants really sharp steak knives it cuts really nicely very easily you can create slices chunks whatever but you, it cuts really easily imagine trying to cut a steak with a pencil imagine how much force you'd have to put on it your plate would be sliding all over the place the steak would be bouncing around the plate you'd be pushing your chips or gravy or whatever it is you've got with your steak all over the table and all over everybody else that's kind of the illustration uh, taken to an extreme of the difference between a sharp chisel and a blunt chisel um, you know, the blunt, you know, the sharp thing was a heck of a lot safer and more enjoyable than, than the blunt one so there you are. The next time you're out having a steak, imagine the imagine the um, uh, trying to cut it with a pencil. And um, if you roll over, you end up rolling over the floor with that image. Just think about what everybody else is thinking about this idiot who's rolling on the floor, and you can you can blame me for that. <laughs> yeah, that's right, William. Okay. Now the, the front face of a cat is roughly just is sort of just above the eyes. That's where the 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 face comes up and then goes over the top of the head. Yeah, they they they. I guess if you like to call it that way, the the forehead on a cat is quite is quite small. Uh, which of course is different different for humans and that's kind of I kind of need to represent that in the fur because that's that's how you see the face and literally if, if I sort of tried to do fur that went this way for example you'd look at the face and just go that's the, it doesn't look right it's wrong mm. if you're lucky you don't understand why but otherwise it just looks silly and just not not realistic at all but unfortunately the <laughs> I guess it's it's um I've made that something which is awkward because of the technique I'm using here which I've only relatively recently discovered of creating a fur-like texture if you watch and I mentioned Jean Buick, uh, Buick um, she creates the she she actually uses shading techniques rather than uh, a a texturing technique that I'm using here and um, because of that she uh, 
she doesn't have to maintain the texture direction shall we say she can shade it in in you know use the shader in any direction she likes just like coloring in with a felt pen perhaps so it's a solid color it doesn't matter which way you've done it um, because I'm actually creating physical texture you can feel it there's like little grooves in the surface I uh, and those little grooves reflect light you can see the direction of them so I do have to maintain the right uh, fur direction for that reason so made it more awkward for myself in in some ways but I do enjoy seeing this it's it looks extremely like I don't know if you can see it, but it looks extremely like fur in real life the the light reflection off at that maybe is is not helping but um, not quite showing up you, you sort of maybe get the impression of it there but it's not really showing up too well on camera I'm afraid but in person it, it really kind of looks like cat, cat fur I think it's worth the extra work um, but there again I don't uh, I don't yet have the the skill to do it like uh, Jean does it uh, on YouTube something to practice which of course is as I said earlier is how you develop the scale in the first place trying to visualize the right uh, as I say the right positioning for the fur it's got to be curved as to where it comes down fortunately it can be a very slow process and sort of um, I half I half mentioned patience when I was talking earlier and I have um, I've been asked on more than one occasion uh, you know, how do I have the patience to do this and it's actually it's a very interesting question because I don't have any patience to do this uh, it, it's not some I, I would say it's not something that requires patience to do you're you're looking at me now drawing uh, tiny lines uh, one at a time relatively slowly and you're possibly kind of wondering how on earth do you not have to have patience for this as I'm doing this every little line I'm drawing I can see that I've drawn it I can see I've, I'm building up a little bit more colour so everything I do I'm getting a result and so it, it's not like I have to have patience because every action I do gives me immediate feedback that it's done where I need patience is for example last night something wasn't going right it was very frustrating I could not get something to look I couldn't get this image to look right that's when you need patience I wasn't getting the result I needed the patience um, to say okay I'm going to try something else I'm going to try something different I'm going to try this I'm going to try that that's when the patience bit comes in the bit well it well it's working fine is just um, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, business as usual is a phase but it, it doesn't require it doesn't require patience because you're getting that feedback and uh, indeed that doesn't mean that you know you're not taking any notice or anything like that I, I mean I, I, I have in the past been doing pyrography I can get up at eight o'clock in the morning and sit down at my desk here with a pyrographic piece and um, I can be busy working away and I can go it's getting a bit dark what is it raining or something and I look I look up and the clock and it's it's eight and nine o'clock at night and the whole day's gone and you just vanished you'd no really concept of time passing uh, and I mean it's now ten o'clock at night I've been streaming for two and a quarter hours 
and yet I don't actually feel like it's been that long. I've probably been talking non-stop for two and a quarter hours. <laughs> but, um, you yeah, know, that, that time it passes really quickly. And uh, <laughs> perhaps address another a question just while I'm there is, is, is you sort of see me more than once I suspect on the stream stop and talk start talking with my hands and not getting a lot of work done um, and the other question is when I'm you know, that I've had is when I'm streaming do I find I don't get as much work done well um, yes if you are to measure the ex the exact level of work but um, I've done, since I started stream, which is about three weeks ago now, I've done more art pieces, done more artwork than I did in the last two years. And that includes stopping like I'm doing now. I'm not doing the work I'm talking um, and looking up at chat and things like that. So does, uh, does streaming mean I do less work? No, it's actually meant I've done a heck of a lot more. Got a lot more practicing. And um, I get to explain my art form to people, which is in itself is, is quite fun to do. I get to show you guys, and uh, that also is quite good fun to do. I get to interact with you and, and chat in, in stream, answer questions, things like that. And so um, uh, streaming is a, an extremely interesting thing to do. Um, so... This actually is starting to look better. If you're still around, William, uh, I, I may uh, unabandon this piece. <laughs> I shall take it back, at least for the moment, anyway, and we will uh, we'll see how it develops and see if uh, I actually start to like it more. Um, it certainly is starting to look that way, and it's uh, it really seems like I needed the uh, something closer to the final colour. To, uh, to to see m uh, the other mistakes that I've picked up on and actually just to see the piece more in my own mind as, as, as a complete piece. So I'm kind of glad. I don't like abandoning a very... I don't actually remember the last time I did abandon a, a piece. Uh, certainly not for pyrography. I've abandoned airbrushing before, um, but I, but in doing so, I've recognised the fact that it you know, it was practice. I learned something. When you abandon it, you kind of learn what you shouldn't have done. And as long as you uh, as long as you you learn something from it, when you you give up on 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 a piece, then. Uh, yeah, my personal view is that's okay. That's a perfectly good thing to do. You, you've learnt not only what not to do. You've also learnt there is a point at which you have to say this isn't working, and it would be a lot better to try again. I think I've still got some uh, level of work to do on getting the fur. Right, it's. I'm still, still not quite. I think I'm probably going to have to sit down and study an actual, study the actual model, and just see how his fur does, um, does pass around this area. I'm not uh, fantastically happy with it. It's a heck of a lot better, but I'm still not, uh, I say, not fantastically happy with it. It doesn't quite look natural to me. There's something against that's just something about the shape that's not quite quite right at the moment. It'll just be it'll just be the angle of the texture which is which isn't quite in quite the correct um, position, but uh, hopefully it'll be something that's easy enough to fix. But um, I say I may have to may have to study the the source rather than a, a photograph which knowing this cat who will, will promptly make it difficult to do because he'll think you're after him for something like to give him a pill and he does not like that so he will go hide don't 
don't know if anybody has cats, but they always somehow seem to be able to sense an ulterior motive, no matter what it is. Especially if, if the ultra, ulterior motive is giving them medication. Um, as soon as they see you, they can disappear like lightning. Okie dokie. Um, it's looking it's looking better, but yeah, you know, I say I still need some more work on it. Um, correcting some of the shading and uh, correcting some of the texturing. I think some of the direction there. Uh, but I am going to actually leave this piece now for tonight. I've now been streaming for almost two hours twenty minutes, and I'm going to. Uh, call it a night and uh, come back tomorrow and take another uh, take a further look at this see if we can uh, continue to to work on it so I'm now give the usual I've just spotted where some of the mistake is I shall make a note for tomorrow rather than doing it now um, I shall give the usual advert um, thank you or anybody who is watching thank you very much for you know, uh, giving me the privilege of uh, showing you some of my art form and work whilst I'm doing it. If it is something that you've enjoyed watching and would like to see more or any of the other art forms like carving the scraper board then I would encourage you of course to push the follow button and uh, hopefully then Twitch will notify you and uh, if you have a mobile phone then Twitch will actually if you download the Twitch app uh, the mobile phone will uh, let you know and that seems to be a bit more reliable when, when the push notifications go out but equally well um, I do have a Twitter uh, which is used almost exclusively uh, just for notifying when I go live so feel free to follow me there the uh, Twitter details are below the uh, the stream window but it's at Zaraganat I generally will stream about seven nights a week at the moment uh, between somewhere around 8pm uh, UK time which is 7pm GMT or is about two hours ten minutes ago from whatever time you currently have on your clock wherever you are in the world so again I just want to say thank you everybody have a I'll say a good night because that's where it is where I am in the UK and I'll hope to see you again on another stream. Bye everybody.